Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello class, today we will talk about design features of language. We call it design features because the features that we are going to talk about today about human language are the you know, intrinsic part of human language design and they represent the nature and character of language. They are also known as Hockett's design feature because Charles Ferguson Hockett published his work in 1960 in the origins of speech in scientific American right? and he derived 13 total features in the beginning. Later on three more were added. So, making it completely 16 features. Now, they are fundamental design features of human any human language because they are the defining elements of a language. Right? Uh, so, Ferguson Hockett, Charles Ferguson Hockett, popularly known as, uh, you know, design, Hockett's design feature, he talks about certain fundamental features of language and how human communication system is distinct, unique, species specific and particular to human. There are certain features that he talks about also are found in uh, you know other animal communication systems. But it's the it, but only it's human that have human language that have that has you know uh, all these features no other species no other uh, system in the, in the entire animal kingdom has these features right and that is why they are they are known as language design features how can design feature of language uh, so number one he talks about vocal auditory channel there's a first design feature vocal auditory channel right so we need to understand that language is primarily oral writing system came to language very late and the writing system is a recording mechanism in terms of orthographic symbols scripts right so here we are talking about primarily language as an oral phenomena. So, orality is the primary focus here, and all these features of language that we are going to talk put into that idea that language is primarily oral. So, the first feature is vocal auditory channel. Vocal voluntarily produced sounds with the help of, uh, you know. All, all other vocal organs and auditory the system of receiving these sounds right so it so they together create a channel vocal production of sound and auditory reception of sound so human language is basically a vocal or you know a vocal auditory thing and it is performed using the vocal tract and auditory channels Hockett viewed this as an advantage of human primates because it allowed for the ability to participate in other activities while simultaneously communicating through spoken language. So, while speaking we can do other works, you know, you can walk or uh, you can, you know, lay down, lay out, uh, no, lay out the table or you can do any other thing and you can communicate, right. It, we communicate in terms of voluntarily produced vocal sounds, right? Uh, by the way, 
you might have noticed that all the sounds that we produce, we produce while we breathe out. And we have got a mechanism to manipulate the air volume with certain constrictors in the entire vocal tract to produce different sounds. Right? Then auditory channel allows us to receive these ch the sounds. Right? It is a two way process. Right? You produce and also you receive. Others, different, of course, others also receive. So, the first design feature of human language is that it is performed or it has vocal auditory channel. Then second one is broadcast transmission and directional reception. So all human sounds can be heard by any other person, any other human being, any other individual if the sound is within the range of reception. Right? So we can hear any sound produced around. Directional reception means that we have a binaural direction finding ability, right? So you can, when you produce sound, it is received from all, all in all directions. It is received in all directions, and you also receive sounds from all directions. And uh, you can do this exp experiment in when you keep the room dark, and if somebody makes a sound, let's say in the left corner of the room or the right corner of the room, in the front side of the room, back side of the room, if some sound comes from the top or from the floor, without looking at the source of the sound, you will be able to understand and uh, you know guess the direction of sound. So not only sound alone, but also direction or the source of sound, binaural direction finding ability that we have. This allows us to produce sounds and transmit it in all directions for receiving by others and also allows us to receive any sound from any direction right? without even physically looking at that. Even if your eyes are closed, you can receive sound and you can guess that the sound is from my back side. The sound is from my left, the sound is from my right, the sound is from my front or from top or maybe from the... So, so you can find the direction. So this is what it means, broadcast transmission that you produce a sound and it can be broadcast in all directions and also directional reception, you can receive these sounds from any direction, 360 degree. So this is the second uh, design feature of human language. Then we move to third, rapid fading or we call it transitory sounds, transitory, that is a character of uh, human language that waveforms of human language dissipate over time, they do not stay, right. So instant reception is required. So if I am speaking, anyone in the proximity will receive the sound instantly. It is not delayed or it, it does not wave, wait. The waves will not wait in air for, so it can never be the case that, you know, I speak something and then I leave the room and then somebody enters the room and listens to that, hears that sound. It never happens. It cannot happen. So that's the, that's a basic character, transitoriness. So it is simultaneous. It's production of sound and reception of sound is simultaneous, right? So it fades away. The moment I speak, it fades away unless we keep a recording system like we are doing a video here and we play it again. So at the time of production, reception happens simultaneously. So transitoriness or what we call rapid fading, another character of human language. Then the fourth design feature is interchangeability. What does it mean? So an individual has the ability to both speak and hear the same sound. Anything that a person is able to hear, they have the ability to reproduce through spoken language. 
so you perform both the roles roles of role of a speaker so is when you produce the sound at the same time simultaneously you are also listener of your own speech so you produce and you receive and it happens simultaneously and the roles are reversible and we have the ability to produce anything that we hear right so this is interchangeability right uh next is total feedback you might have seen uh, in music concerts if you have gone to a music concerts you might have seen that you know we have multiple speakers around for audience but there are some speakers which have direction facing the performer the singer so the on the stage you might have seen that these speakers are put and they are facing facing the singer why do we do that because singer is singing so he doesn't have to worry about it because he can listen to his own voice but the singer wants to be con confirmed uh, that you know if his voice is traveling in a particular channel how it is being received by the audience so you might have seen that this this these speakers because he wants to monitor his own sound in that particular channel right you might have seen in music concerts speakers designated for singer alone and speakers for audience total feedback means a speaker has the ability to hear himself or herself while speaking and through this they are able to monitor their speech production and internalize what they are producing through language right imagine if the feedback is not possible then what i'm saying suppose that what i'm saying uh, i'm not able to hear that what will happen i have no clue what i'm speaking right total feedback so human language has this feature of total feedback which allows the speaker to monitor his or her own speech make corrections we do corrections while we speak right because we have the feedback with the first person in the first person to give feedback to ourselves we we you know produce a sound we produce a speech and also we get the feedback right and uh, we can manage we can internalize and we can understand what we are producing so that is total feedback that's the fifth uh, you know design feature of human language then specialization number 6 that is a specialization human language sounds are specialized for communication i you know uh, i earlier also i told you that individual sounds don't mean anything but they are put in a particular combination in a string to give you some meaning so everything that you speak every word that we speak represents an objective reality or reality around us right and it triggers a mental image and when i say dog it triggers a mental image so every word that we speak or the sentences that we speak they carry certain meaning right we don't have meaningless words and meaningless sentences we don't produce meaningless words and meaningless sentences so when you produce speech or uh, you know these these sentences words phrases clauses they all carry meaning and why do have these meanings to communicate to interact to socialize so language human language is designed to communicate meaning right some meaning out of it it's neck it can never be meaningless all right a specialization refers to that human language is sound are specialized for communication because they carry the chunks combinations strings carry certain meaning unlike other animals like for example panting of a dog right so not necessarily they have some meaning to communicate 
but it is for cooling them themselves you know dogs pant to cool you know themselves or for example you know the dance of bees right so different dances represent uh, the distance between nectar and hive but otherwise so they don't have the kind of specialized developed system that human language has right human language goes beyond time and space we'll we'll come to that very quickly next is semanticity that means special signals or the word or the sentences carry special meaning right we never use or produce a word or a sentence that doesn't have meaning because if it doesn't have meaning it's not a word if it doesn't have a meaning it, it's not a sentence so we produce meaningful words meaningful sentences and uh, there if every everything that we produce every signal that we produce it represents or triggers certain image or uh, certain reference so it gives us meaning so semanticity refers to meaningfulness of human language right every chunk or word or utterance sentences that we produce they all carry certain meaning then number 8 is arbitrariness interesting this is very interesting arbitrariness so there is no limitation to what can be communicated about and there is no specific or necessary connection between sounds used and the message being sent arbitrary that means sound ka it doesn't carry any meaning individually as a, as a sound or pa as a sound doesn't have any meaning ka as a sound doesn't have any meaning but they are combined in a particular way and when they are combined in a particular way like cow for that matter pen for that matter fan for that matter they give us certain meaning they refer to something right some object or they they trigger some mental image all right but when we look at the relationship or connection between a word called let's say pen and the actual object called pen there is no one to one relationship so why a pen is called a pen a fan is called a fan right you might have seen different words for pen in different languages so you'll have different words let's say in hindi we call it kalam in telugu you call it something else in tamil you something else every language will have a word for pen or, or a fan or maybe for take an example but that doesn't change the objective reality of the world a pen will be pen whether you call it in english or in hindi or in telugu or in any language right because there is no one to one relationship so the character or the property of the object has nothing to do with the way it is named so your name right has no direct link and connection with you as a person and your characteristics right it is arbitrary this relationship is arbitrary so isn't it beautiful that with the help of you know these sounds which are individually meaningless we create strings and the meanings assigned to them are arbitrary but we are able to perfectly you know, communicate with each other socialize and interact that's the beauty of language arbitrariness is another important design feature then we move to discreteness discreteness refers to the uniqueness of each sound a particular language may have right so these sounds are discrete in nature different in nature distinguishable you can you can recognize them separately they do not overlap so pa is not ba ba is not ka ka is not cha cha is not ta ta is not la so all these sounds that a language has in any language they are unique identifiable are you know arbitrary and discrete we can count them and interesting to see that every language has a limited set of sounds which are discrete 
they can be counted, they are distinguishable, identifiable, right? And uh, they can be differentiated, right? So it's not a single you know, stretch sound or, or, or blurred sound. Every word, every sound has a boundary. So one sound and other sound begins. In a word, we are able to identify a word, you know, because we have different sounds in that particular word. Then number 10 is displacement. What is displacement? Displacement means language allows you to go beyond the front limitations of time and space. That means language can represent something which is not really present in the space and something which has not happened in the particular synchronized time that I am speaking, at the time of speaking. So I can defy the limits of time and space, human language can defy the limits of time and space and it can transcend the limits. So I can talk about something happened five years back, I can talk about something I am planning to do next year. So time, the limits of time can be defined in terms of language. Also space. I can talk about someone in Delhi sitting while sitting in Chennai, right? Or I can talk about someone uh, in New York sitting in Delhi, right? So the person or the event or the idea does not necessarily have to be present here while I'm talking about it. So language allows us to defy and transcend the limits of time and space. This is displacement. It's a very, uh, you know, unique uh, character of human language, which is not found in any of the animal communication system, right? So, uh, it's not. It allows us to be, you know, to to travel in time and to cover uh, unimagined space. That's the beauty of language human language and that is called displacement. Then productivity. Now Chomsky also talked about finite set of linguistic elements and infinite set of output that we have. So human language has finite set of linguistic elements like sounds for that matter. Every language has a particular number of sounds. But if you look at the words it produces, sentences it produces, they are unlimited. Right? So English is restricted to, let's say, 24 consonants and 20 vowels, if we broadly look at it. It's total 44 sounds. But with these 44 sounds, we can't actually count the number of words we can produce out of it. Similarly, we can't count the number of utterances and sentences we can produce out of all these words. So, it gives you an infinite productivity with a finite set of elements available in that particular language. That is, that is infinite productivity of human language. That is the beauty of it. It's very important design feature, character of human language. Then we have traditional transmission, number 12. Now, what do you mean by traditional transmission? Human language or any particular language is inherited from older generation to the new generation. Right? It is not completely innate. Okay, let us not confuse the idea with which Chomsky uses the word innate, but we go by the general idea called innate. So, language is not genetically inherited, right? It is learned, it is transferred, it is transmitted from one generation to the other. So, when the human child is born, the child acquires language in a social environment, right? And uh, it is transmitted 
traditionally right that is the only reason why suppose a hindi speaking parent adopt a let's say a tamil speaker child a child from tamil speaking parent child will acquire hindi as mother tongue not tamil because language is not genetically transferred it is learned in a social environment but traditional transmission means that language is not completely innate and acquisition depends in part on the learning of a language in a particular social environment and this is possible in human societies not in other animal king you know a species not in other species and in this entire animal kingdom language is traditionally transferred only for human child right so this is a peculiar particular human language feature then the 13 is duality of patterning that means we have multiple layers of meaning right Uh, so the meaningless segments or units called sounds are combined to make meaningful words then these meaningful words can further be combined to get meaningful sentences then these meaningful sentences can further be combined to get meaningful paragraphs and then the whole discourse right so this is called this ability of language to do so is known as duality of patterning because the existing elements can be used linguistic elements can be used and reused for different meanings and different purposes right so while hockett believed that all communication systems uh, among all communication systems animal and human alike they share many of these features right but only human language contains all the 13 design features and additionally traditional transmission duality of patterning are the key to human language system so these are 13 uh, primary design features that hockett talked about but in a report published in 1968 with an anthropologist and scientist stuart a altman hockett derived three more design features see he added three more features to human language understanding human language and these three features are for example prevarication reflexivity and learnability so prevarication refers to the ability of human being to represent something which is not true so if you go by the ideal understanding of human language it must represent objective reality and the truth if you go by the truth value theory but human language allows us or we the language that we speak allow us to represent falsehood and we all are familiar that you know oh, we all have spoken uh, we all must have told the lies in our life we have the pretensions we have uh, uh, falsehood representing falsehood we represent falsehood sometimes we create meaningless statements irrelevant things that we produce prevarication is a very important phenomena and character of human language that it allows you uh you know it allows deception it allows us to represent falsehood it can allow us to pretend right which is not possible in any other animal communication system right so pretensions representing falsehood producing meaningless sentence meaningless sentences they're not possible in any other uh, animal communication system but la human language system allows us to do so so this is one of the most important characters i mean you might have seen kids around 
who teaches them how to lie, how to tell a lie? Right? Who teaches them how to tell a lie? Right? They learn it in, in, in a social environment. Pretext, the pretense, we all learn. And language allows us to do so. So this is prevarication. The 14th feature, again, is very crucial and important. Then we have 15th reflexiveness. It is, it is ironical, it is uh, strange, and it is also surprising to see that we need language to talk about language. I am talking about language to you with the help of language. Language can reflect upon itself. You have no other mechanism to talk about language but language itself. So this is the reflexiveness. So language represents language, language reflects upon language, language discusses language. We can discuss about language. I am talking to you on language in a language called English. Right. This is another character called reflexivity. So reflexiveness, that is the 15th design feature. Then we have learnability, number 16. What does it mean? That any individual can learn any language, which is not possible. A dog cannot learn how to roar. A lion cannot learn how to bark. Right? But a human, I can learn French. I am a Hindi speaker. I can learn Telugu, Tamil, French, Italian, or any English speaker can learn Hindi or Tamil or Telugu. Right? So we have this free will to learn any language. That's the beauty of human language that it allows any human to learn any language, and this character is known as learnability. That was the 16th character or 16th feature that Hockett added to already 13 features. So, three features were added in 1968 uh, reflexiveness, learnability, and prevarication. All right. So, these are known as Hockett's design feature or design feature simply we call it of the human language. Because they are the you know you know you know design features which define human language, and uh, in any other animal communication, we do not find all these sixteen features present. So it is species specific, and uh, only human beings are endowed with this ability to have language, which is such a beautiful complex phenomenon. But interestingly, it comes to us so naturally that we hardly notice the complexity of it. That's the beauty of language. Thank you.